Good afternoon and welcome to the Yale Center for British Arts Monthly Art in Context. I am Linda Friedlander, Head of Education here at the Center. Today's speaker is Miriam Ahadi Hamadani, a postdoctoral research associate at the Yale Center for British Art. Her research interests include transnationality and diaspora and the politics of post-war abstraction and visual culture in Britain and beyond. She has curated exhibitions for the Cleveland Foundation and the Wichita Museum of Art and has held positions at the Cleveland Museum of Art, the Museum of Contemporary Art, Cleveland, the Museum, the Ulrich Museum of Art and Tate Liverpool. Currently, Miriam is working on two upcoming exhibitions at the center, a survey of work by Bridget Riley, which will be opening in March of 2022, and a survey of prints and drawings from the permanent collection. Miriam's talk today is titled Shock and Awe, History, Memory, and the Archive as Art Practice. Please note that this program will be recorded. Your camera and sound are muted and will remain so during the program. We will be using the Q&A feature located, located on your uh, navigation bar to gather your questions and we'll attempt to answer some of them at the end of the program, but fe please feel free to submit questions at any time. If you need closed captioning, a live transcript is available by clicking on the icon on your toolbar. Yale University acknowledges that the indigenous people and nations, including Mohegan, Mashantucket Pequot, Western Pequot, Shagatcock, Gold Hill Pogaset, Niantic, and the Quinnipiac and other Algonquin speaking people have stewarded for generations the lands and waterways of what is now the state of Connecticut. We honor and respect the enduring relationship that exists between these people and nations and this land. Mary Ann? Uh, thank you, Linda, for that great introduction. And thank you uh, to Linda and James for inviting me to uh, do an art, art in context and to talk about two works in our collection um, from a series uh, uh, titled The Big Secret. I'm just going to stop my video though so that we can focus on the artworks uh, in the PowerPoint. Um, so uh, as I mentioned today, I'm going to be talking about uh, uh, two drawings in our collection uh, from a, a series of four works uh, collectively titled The Big Secret. Um, this uh, is a series of four monumental drawings that depict photographs of soldiers of the British West Indies Regiment during World War I. The two works that you see here, which are in our collection, um, are uh, uh, images that are taken from photographs that Walker sourced from the Imperial War Museum's archives in London. Um, now, uh, Walker uh, considers herself a research-based practitioner, so I kind of want to give you a little bit of a, an understanding of her practice more broadly and where this particular series of, of, of uh, the big secret where this series comes from. Um, first, before kind of talking a little bit more in detail about actually the history behind the British West Indies Regiment and um, um, a little more uh, detail about these works uh, specifically. So as you see here, the two works in our collection, the big secret two and big secret four are part of this series of four works. Um, these are the other two works in that series that are also uh, uh, taken from those photographs of uh, the at the Imperial uh, War Museum uh, in London. Now, Barbara Walker was born in Birmingham, UK, and regards herself as a research-based practitioner, as you see uh, with the big secret, uh, 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 the images from the big secret, um, that uh, um, for her uh, research is just as important as the drawings themselves. And uh, during, um, uh, uh, doing research for these particular images. She uh, spent about six months to a year um, accessing archives, again, the Imperial War Museums, archives in Jamaica, private and public archives, having series of conversations with uh, active soldiers who are in the British Armed Forces as well uh, in order to, um, to uh, conduct this research uh, to begin um, these works. Now, the big secret uh, series, those four drawings, comes from a larger sort of uh, 
um, major commission of drawings collectively titled Shock and Awe. And now this is a major commission that culminated in a solo exhibition at Mac Birmingham, a contemporary art gallery space uh, in Birmingham, UK uh, in 2016. And this was during the centenary of World War I. So it was sort of a part of that larger project to mark the centenary of, of the First World War. Um, and what this particular uh, larger project, Shock and Awe, is, is acknowledging a sort of absence of representation over the past hundred years of Black servicemen and service women uh, in the British Armed Forces. So Walker's exhibition is concentrating upon the contribution of these Black servicemen and women of the British Armed Forces from World War I to the present day. Um, and uh, her research and, 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 and uh, these works are, are a culmination of, of seven years of, of work, uh, seven years of, of research and drawing, and over 27 works in total were kind of shown in this exhibition, uh, Shock and Awe. Um, now, I kind of want to just uh, give you a sense of Shock and Awe collectively, this, this larger project uh, that illustrates uh, images of um, these uh, Black servicemen and women, um, and sort of the reasoning behind uh, why Walker chose this particular topic um, as uh, part of the series. Um, again, you know, uh, Walker is a portraitist and she works in a wide range of media and formats. Um, and while she has uh, is a painter and has uh, created paintings, uh, her visual language is primarily that of drawing. Um, and she's interested in the graphic elements of drawing. Um, um, and what she says about her practice generally and why she chose to focus on the, the histories of these black servicemen and women from World War I to the present day is that her practice is about recuperating or making visible black presence, particularly in Britain. Um, and what she says collectively of, of this collective sort of group of works of shock and awe and of the big secret, that these works are about protest, they're about remembrance, they're about agency, quiet activism, and they're about celebration. Um, she mentions about this, about this particular series, and, and this is a quote that she says, you know, she says, you would never know from stories broadcast on television or appearing in other media that black soldiers and other military personnel from the empire or commonwealth have had important, though largely unacknowledged parts to play in Britain's military campaign. So this is sort of the impetus behind uh, this particular series. Um, and as she says of her own practice generally, growing up in Birmingham, her experiences directly shaped a practice that was concerned or is concerned with issues of class, power, gender, race, representation, and belonging. Um, and the issues of belonging, of power, of visibility and representation of, 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 um, of Black folks in Britain and elsewhere are important to her practice and central to her practice. Um, so I kind of just want to go through shock and on, kind of give you a, a, a sense of Walker's practice generally through this particular uh, collection of commissioned works um, um, that show a range of media and formats that she, that she works with um, that are part of this, uh, this um, project. Generally, so as you see here again, uh, Walker considers herself a research based practitioner she engages with the archive and she uses ephemera as part of her practice. These particular works were showcased uh, in the shock and awe exhibition and show her referencing uh, historical newspapers um, and uh, show her also referencing recruitment posters um, here, for example, and you know, what she's doing here is sort of illustrating um, sort of archival ephemeral images that she uh, found. And these are facsimiles, uh, uh, sort of blown up in a larger scale, facsimiles of these newspapers. Um, you see here, Englishmen do your duty. And these are from World War II. And on these facsimiles, she draws directly images of black service women uh, during World War II that she found uh, from newspaper uh, sources or from archives directly onto those historical, uh, those facsimiles of these historical uh, uh, ephemera. 
And then another sort of facet to here are these recruitment posters of World War I. These are recruitment posters that would have been plastered all over the British West Indies uh, during World War I to recruit uh, servicemen to come and be a part of the war efforts during the First World, World, World War. And for those of you who are unfamiliar, you know, the British Empire at one point, the West Indies was part of the empire. Um, some of those countries are part of the Commonwealth now. And the British West Indies refers generally to to countries like Jamaica, to Trinidad and Tobago, to, um, to Barbados, for example, uh, to British Guyana, what is now known as Guyana. And what she's doing here, you know, she's uh, drawing um, on these particular images here, these recruitment posters, you see uh, portraits of, of two black men and these two black men um, are uh, servicemen who are currently service, uh, serving in the British Armed Forces. Now, again, as I mentioned, Walker is a research-based practitioner and part of that research it involves conversations with, with people uh, generally. And what she's doing here, you know, is directly referencing historical artifacts um, um, but making um, sort of uh, connecting the sort of historical past with the present to kind of illustrate and um, draw attention to the fact that war isn't necessarily in the past, but it's also a contemporary thing. It's something that's current. And by sort of juxta juxtaposing portraits of, uh, of men who are act in active duty right now currently um, with uh, recruitment posters from World War I is making those historical connections. And that's really a part of her practice is to bring um, the historical past into the present um, to talk about history and, um, and how it's constructed and who's left out of those historical narratives and to restore their agency essentially. Um, and as you see here, these, this, these two works together. Other works from this uh, commissioned uh, project, Shock and Awe, um, are uh, these two works. She works in small embossed works on paper. Um, again, referencing photographs sourced from archival research. On the left, you see an image of uh, soldiers from World War I, and on the right, uh, two Black service women from World War II. And you can see that we've got uh, two figures that are uh, effectively sort of made, um, erased or sort of made invisible through these white silhouettes here. Um, and this is some a formal strategy that you'll see in, in, our, in our two works uh, from The Big Secret, but also generally in her practice uh, 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 more broadly um, as well. And this sort of strategy here is uh, kind of focusing on these white silhouettes, which are actually uh, figures in the photographs of, um, of, uh, of the white servicemen or service women who are um, depicted in these actual photographs. And by erasing them or making them um, white silhouettes or uh, showing them sort of embossed in that kind of uh, relief where they're almost made invisible, what Walker is trying to do is to, again, restore the agency of these particular soldiers um, um, in these photographs to draw the viewer's attention to um, those figures um, and to, again, point out um, that sort of push and pull between what history has told us about war and who is part of that war and what actually is, uh, what actually did happen, what actually, what figures were actually there and who actually were part of that war effort as well. And again, as you see here with our two works, the one on the right, Big Secret 4, um, she uh, uses this sort of formal strategy, again, of erasing or concealing um, um, uh, figures. Here, for example, you see that she's blotted out uh, one of the soldiers um, with white paint, again, drawing attention to the fact that these, um, these uh, servicemen are um, part of this uh, history, but are often left out of those sort of uh, mainstream narratives of, of World War I history. And another part of Walker's strategy, and this is something um, that's uh, really a performative aspect of her practice um, as an artist who is invested in drawing as a medium, is uh, these large scale temporary drawings that she'll draw directly on the gallery walls. Now for the Shock and Awe exhibition, and I'll go back a little bit so you can see, um, she drew uh, uh, directly on the gallery walls these images of Black service women who are, in, you know, in, in drill formation here. And throughout the course of the exhibition, she would wipe, uh, eventually uh, wiped away these um, figures from the gallery walls. Now, I don't have a, an image of her doing that, but this is another um, another exhibition in which she's sort of doing that. Um, and. 
what it sort of means, again, this is another formal strategy of showing this erasure of this invisibility of this absence of restoring agency, but then um, illustrating how that agency has been taken away through media or through historical representations, right? Um, so here, you know, uh, in the shock and awe, erasing these drawings, she wipe, wiping them away is a sort of symbol of how these figures have been um, absent throughout history. Um, and it has a symbolic meaning for Walker, this performative act of drawing. She erases them to sort of show that their labor was also made invisible, that their, uh, their labor, their part uh, in the war effort is also made invisible. And she erases them to point out that absence in these national war histories, to point out the scant evidence of their presence in the archives that she's um, looking through, right? Um, and there's a sort of push and pull between restoring the visibility and agency of these figures, uh, most of them who are unknown to Walker and who are unknown to history, in a sense, um, and also illustrating their absence in the archive. And so erasing these temporary uh, drawings is one way of pointing that uh, um, erasure out. Now, again, um, these are the two works in our collection, The Big Secret 2 and Big Secret 4. Again, these are part of a, a larger group, again, of, of four, four, four works uh, titled The Big Secret, which um, are uh, images that are sourced from the Imperial War Museum archives and show photographs of the British West Indies Regiment. And uh, the works in our collection are two photographs of, of these of the of uh, soldiers from the West Indies Regiment uh, during the Battle of Somme. Um, now, uh, the Battle of Somme, which took place between July and November of 1916, um, is probably the most um, single most important episode in British uh, World War I military history. Um, and the reason for this is that it was one of the deadliest battles, uh, not only of World War I, but in human history generally. The Battle of Somme took place between July and November of 1916. It was a joint operation between the British and French forces against uh, Germans on the Western Front. And the battle was intended to be a victory, uh, to uh, be a decisive victory for the allies, but instead more than 3 million men fought in the battle and over 1 million men were wounded or killed, again, making it one of the most de uh, deadliest battles in, in human history. Now, um, in the spirit of Walker's uh, uh, um, research-based practice, I kind of want to give a, a background um, as to the Battle of Somme and as to the role of British West Indies uh, regiment during this war and also of Commonwealth of soldiers during the Battle of Somme. And so here are just some images, actual images of um, the Battle of Somme or the aftermath of the Somme battle um, in 1916. But um, during, um, during this battle and during the war, soldiers from the Empire and Commonwealth made significant contributions to the Somme offensive. Here are some images of some of these um, uh, soldiers. Uh, there was a contingent from the Bermuda Volunteer Rifle Corps. There was a division of the Indian Cavalry and a South African Brigade, and they were joined by Australians, New Zealanders, and Canadians. And, and, and often, I think we, we forget that uh, the Commonwealth of the Empire, um, that, these, that these men and women, um, primarily men in World War I, were part of this effort uh, in World War I um, and are often maybe left out of those mainstream narratives of history. And even left out of the uh, of the histories then as well, these particular men, the British West Indies India Indies Regiment, for example, um, um, were not allowed to be part of the victory parades, for example. And this was something um, that uh, again sort of uh, erases and, and takes away the agency of these, this particular regiment. So a little bit about the British West Indies Regiment generally. They didn't fight as equals alongside the white, uh, uh, their white peers, um, unfortunately. Um, the War Office assigned the British West Indies Regiment and regiments of men of color to essentially labor duties during the World War I. Although during the Bloody Battle of Somme, a lot of them would replace these casualties on the front line. Um, so what kind of labor did the British West Indies Regiment do? Um, this particular picture here shows uh, them in action uh, in, in doing that sort of labor. Um, carrying ammunition was one facet of their work. Working in ammunition dumps, building roads and gun emplacements, digging trenches, acting as stretcher bearers, 
loading ships and trains. And this work was often dangerous. It was carried out within range of German art artillery and snipers. So although they were not always on the front line and were mostly assigned and relegated to labor duties, they were, you know, just as, it was just as dangerous uh, for them as well. And I also want to point out that the British West Indies Regiment, you saw those recruitment posters uh, that um, Barbara Walker used um, to draw um, um, servicemen who are currently um, serving on, on, the, on, the, on the front of them. Um, they were volunteers. The British West Indies Regiment was a regiment full of volunteers. Um, and I want to kind of show you to uh, the images, those actual photographs that Walker uh, sourced um, from the Imperial War Museum archives to, to, um, to produce the Big Secret uh, uh, series here. Now, we don't know who some of these soldiers are. Many of them are lost to history. Barbara Walker herself talks about um, getting to know these figures by drawing them, imagining sort of their stories and their pasts and, their, and, and, and understanding them in that way. But many of these men's names are lost to history. And when they came back after World War I, they found you know, that they still returned to face discrimination, um, not only back home in the West Indies, where um, many um, people in the West Indies saw the World War I, uh, the war as, as the white man's war, essentially, and, and why go you know, why go and, and be part of this effort when, um, when um, it was something that they thought was uh, unnecessary or uh, a battle that was over there in a sense, but also returned to face discrimination back in the UK as well. Um, and I kind of want to show you, um, again, the image that she's using from the Imperial War archives here, uh, this particular figure uh, being blotted out with the white paint just to kind of show you what it looks like uh, alongside and uh, this image here of, of well, as well as the big secret two of these two, uh, three men at rest um, on um, the um, Albert Amiens road um, during the Battle of Somme. And um, I'm kind of running out of time, but I, I kind of want to talk a little bit about, um, about these images and about uh, Walker's practice here, right? So uh, for Walker, as somebody who is engaged in research-based uh, practice, as somebody who looks at photographs and visits archives and draws the human figure and is invested in thinking about those histories, she talks about photography. This is what she says. She says, photography is documentation of a situation. It's documentation of a community, of society. Um, and I think it's interesting to point out that these drawings uh, are pretty faithful to the original photographs, as you see here, apart from those formal strategies of erasing uh, images, of erasing figures in order to point out uh, the, their lack of uh, presence in, in some of these mainstream narratives of history. Um, um, and there's a kind of historical truth, again, to these photographs, and we can talk about this a little bit more, but there's a sort of historical truth in the way that Walker looks at these photographs and, and really does stay true to what she sees in those images. And I think that's really interesting to think of because it also points to a lack of truth in, in a sense, right? Um, she's using these photographs. She talks about visiting these in the archives, but also um, um, the scant evidence of their presence in the archives. And we can kind of think about um, archives as a repository of history. Well, who gets collected? Who, what, what histories um, are kind of um, 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 kept in archives? And what histories are kind of thrown away or are seen as maybe not being important to, to remembering um, and, and thrown out. And I think Walker's work kind of situates these particular drawings situate us into understanding that there, there, there was a presence there, but even that presence in the archives throughout her research is, is very scant as well. Um, and it points again to that lack of truth. There are these photographs here. She's staying true to those photographs, but she's also pointing out that, um, that, um, that um, the evidence of, of their presence in the archive is also uh, also almost invisible is also has also been erased. Um, and for example, like in my own research, I'm just Googling the Battle of Somme, just Googling it. Um, the images that you see are images of white British soldiers, of French soldiers, of German soldiers, but not of the um, West Indies Regiment, not of these particular black soldiers. And what 
um, what Walker's work is doing is, and this is what she says, and I'll end here. She says that she hopes that this series of artworks will live on as a permanent record of the spirit and dedication of these remarkable men and women. And so these particular works, you know, are referencing the absence in the archive, but what they actually also do become a part of that history. She's again, acknowledging that history through the works uh, that you see here. And um, because of that, we're able to, to understand and, and know more about the story of this uh, particular regiment and these particular soldiers. And I think I'll end there. Thank you so, so much, Miriam. That was a really, really wonderful and powerful talk. Um, we do have time for some questions. So if you have not submitted any questions into the Q&A or the chat option, um, you can please do that now in the few moments that we have. We do have a few questions that came through. Um, one question right at the top, which actually came from Linda, the question of whether or not these, uh, these drawings are treated or sprayed in any way. This question was actually answered by our director who was in the audience and um, Director Courtney Martin said that the images are not sprayed; they are not treated. So this is uh, this is drawing on paper and um, left untreated. So that's there is something to that uh, untreated surface, and it's that fragility um, I think is is really important. Um, another question that came through: someone asked, and I'm not sure if you can't answer this, but how does the medium of drawing um, relate to? this project it does does walker speak at all about you know why drawing on such a monumental scale as opposed to um maybe a more traditional medium like painting oil painting to to sort of you know grab the gravity of of the history right she actually talks about this um she is drawn to drawing um she talks about um her interest in the hierarchy of medium uh, of mediums and how, uh, you know, we kind of, when we think about a sort of academic understanding of, um, of uh, painting uh, or of mediums themselves, you know, we have this idea that at the apex of, of art, the best type of art is painting and the best uh, representations of painting, like what, what is at the apex are historical paintings. Those are what um, were traditionally considered in, in the academy, and I'm talking about the British Academy, I'm talking about Reynolds and the academy, and the, establishing these sort of genres of what's important, the most important genre is history painting, maybe the lowest sort of uh, uh, genre is still, like, still lifes, um, and then portraits are maybe above that, landscapes. Um, and she's interested in the hierarchy of media. She talks about uh, uh, the use using pencil and think and, and kind of thinking about how that um, um, using this sort of humble medium um, to actually, in a sense, uh, draw what was considered the apex of, of the genres, his, historical painting by using um, the medium that is considered to be like the most humble. Um, mm -hmm. So that's an interesting push and pull there. She talks about that, but she also actually connects the use of these pencil of pencils of this sort of humble media of, 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 uh, of uh, pencils and Conte crowns and charcoal um, as something that is parallel to the marginalization of the figures that she does represent. So mm -hmm. she's she is making a conscious decision in the material that she's using um, in order to to um, to convey um, uh, historical paintings in a sense. And she does talk about scale. Scale is important as you can see, you know, she draws directly on the walls and the galleries and then um, as a, a, a labor of love in a sense and, and physically labor as well. And to also point out the invisibility of, of labor by also showing the labor of, of drawing these really detailed drawings and then erasing them throughout the course of the exhibition. Um, they're large, they're blown up in scale. Um, these particular drawings in our um, collection are, are are monumental. They come from, you know, photographs that are small, and um, she blows them up, and and it's it's a monumental presence. It's meant to, to um, kind of make a mark to show that they were there in a sense. So scale is important, and so is the medium as well. And this is just a technical question: um, is the, is she working freehand, looking at the photo, the blown up photo, and then drawing directly on the paper? Or is there like a grid system, or is there a projection, or how does that work? As far out? as I know, and I. Yeah, as I, I know I know for the large scale drawing, she doesn't actually use a projection, which is something really, really spectacular mm -hmm. because most, uh, I would say most people who are drawing directly on gallery walls are using large scale or drawing murals. They use a grid system, they use a projection, but mm -hmm. Barbara Walker, she talks about it. She does it freehand 
And she actually does all those drawings herself. She doesn't have a group of people um, that work with her apart from somebody who will help her build the scaffold and maybe somebody that are, will help her erase the drawing. But um, mm -hmm. essentially everything's done freehand as far as I know. Well, well, that's uh, all the questions we have. Thank you again so much um, to our audience. Please remember that we have a couple of events coming up um, this week and next month. Uh, this Thursday, we have a digital docent program discussing women and reading in British art. And that begins at 12 p.m. on Thursday, the 28th. And then next month's Art in Context will be with Mark Aronson, our chief conservator at the center, speaking on Joshua Reynolds. Thank you all for your attendance and have a great day.